Now let's talk about how to do the routing table, how to check the every entries of the routing table. Actually, we can use the display IP routing table command to check the IP routing table. So here you can see that for this router, they have actually six different routing entries. And for each routing entry, we can see first the destination and the mask. So this identifies the IP address range of the destination. If they falls in within this range, then they can go from this interface and the next hub will be this IP address. So this is the meaning of interface and next hub. Now let's look at these domains. This protocol means through which protocol this entry is inserted, is generated. So if they are directly connected network, then they are added through direct routing. And if they are added by manually adding it, then that is the static routing table, routing entry. And for this one, that is the route preference. With the lower the value is, the higher the preference is. So actually, zero is the default routing preference for direct routing, and 60 is the default routing preference for the dynamic routing. If the preference is the same, then we need to check the value of cost. We will select a cost with the lower value to forward the package. And also we have the flags. Okay, these are the detailed definition of every domain in the routing table. Actually, we have introduced the detailed explanation of every domain in last slides. You can check later by yourself. Okay, so if we summarize the route preference, actually they will work like this. If there is a new routing entry, then they will check first whether the destination subnet or mask has already been in the routing table. If it is the same, then they will check whether the preference is higher or lower than the already existed routing entry. If this entry has the higher preference, then they will install this entry into the routing table. And if the destination are different, that means we haven't install such a uh, routes for this destination, then we should add this entry directly into the routing table without comparing the preference. So this is the preference comparison process. So for example, in this router, the routing table is like this. Actually, they have two different routing entries. First is generated by the static protocol and the preference is 60. The second is generated by the OSPF, which has the preference of 10. So here, this OSPF have the lower value. It means they have the higher preference. So they will forward the package according to this path routing entry. So actually, this router will forward the package to this one, right? So this is the next hop. Okay, then actually we can compare the metric also. So if the protocol are the same and the preference are the same, then the router will further compare the cost and they will select a path with the lower cost. Right? So this one has the lower cost. So the router will select this path to forward the packet. So in that case, the router A will forward this packet to the next hub 30. So they will forward through this link and forward to the next hub router of this one. So if preference are different, find the higher preference entry. If the preference is the same, then find the lower cost entry. Okay, so this table gives the common default values for different routing type. Actually, the direct routing have the lowest value, so they have the highest routing preference. Okay, because this one directly represents which network are connected to this router. 
So the network will be the next hop. Then they just to transmit. That's okay. So this is with the highest preference. And then with static routing, actually that is added by administrator. It's manually added into the routing table, and its preference value is 60. So actually, this one is lower than the OSPF internal routes, but higher than the OSPF external routes in terms of the preference. And dynamic routing protocol, actually, there are different types of routing algorithms, and different types of routing algorithms will have different default preference. So they will first check the internal result, and then the static result, and then the external result. Okay. Okay, so if we summarize both the preference and the metric, actually they will add the routing entries like this. So first they also check whether it's a different destination. If different, directly install. Then if the preference is higher than the existing entries, then install it. And then if the preference are the same, then they will check whether this is a lower cost path. If it has the lower metric, then install it. So that's all for how to compare the metrics and how to decide whether we will add this entry into the routing table.